Good morning. Good morning to everybody gathered here in person. Good morning to those of you who gathered here online with us worshiping live or later on in the week. My name is Kurt Schmidt and I serve as the cantor and the chief musician here at Zion in Deerfield Beach Ministries Under the Cross. It is my delight to welcome you to worship this morning on this, the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. I'll tell you, if this is what the hustle and bustle of Mary and Joseph looking for a room, a uh, place in the inn is like, then I'm all for it. Uh, it's a little bit of a chaotic morning here at Zion, but for all the right reasons. I'd like to welcome uh, those who are here with me leading worship this morning, our congregation president, Dr. Robin Larson, Drew Shimkus, who is reading and greeting for us this morning, Pastor Dave Dangerfield, and Pastor Anna Marie Noto. Uh, pastor Noto, who is not only uh, a pastor, but a member of Zion, is here participating in a baptism this morning for two families that are long associated with Zion, but here to have their children baptized. So we rejoice with the families of Brielle Rose and Joseph Michael as they are baptized this morning and welcomed into the family of God. If you are worshiping with us online, there is a bulletin you can follow along with hymns for the sermon this morning. Yes, you heard me, hymns for the sermon. Two different downloads available on zion-lutheran.org slash worship dash bulletins. Uh, another way to get there is to go to our homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you see there a link for worship bulletins. Thanks to some uh, wonderful hide and seek, we did find the remote to turn on our projectors. So if you're here in person, everything you need is up on the screens. All the words, all the responses. Uh, so those of you who are here in person, you needn't worry about that. Uh, those are our pre-service announcements. And so I would invite you to stand or remain seated as you wish for our confession and forgiveness. God's dream of a world at peace, where enemies reconcile and children play in safety, where the poor and the powerless find justice. Remember God's promise, promise of a ruler of peace, filled with the Spirit of God, of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, of justice and faithfulness. Come, Lord Jesus, open our lives to the peace you bring. Let us turn to you and get ready. <laughs> Thank you. 
mercy and forgive us. Grant us wisdom to walk in your light and to see the things that it will endure until Christ comes again in glory. glory. Amen. Trust and obedience 
especially in trying times. When we trust and obey, we too sing with joy what God is up to. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, your presence, that at the celebration of your son's birth, his spirit might dwell anew in our midst. For he is our life and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Hello again, and good morning again to everybody who has joined us for worship this morning. If you are new or this is your first visit to Zion, we ask that you find in the pew, uh, in the cards in front of you, a connect card and to fill that out, to share with us your name, your email, your phone number, however it is you'd like us to connect with you. Uh, if there's anything that you need, prayer requests or uh, a specific ministry request, Fill that out. If you're here in person, you can leave it in the offering plates when you uh, exit, or if you're online, you can fill it out. Same information at zion-lutheran.org. That's our website slash visitor. Um, we rejoice in seeing new faces here. We rejoice in seeing old faces who are new again. So uh, if you'd like to connect with us more, please do so. Please use that as the means to do so. This week we continue, uh, AA will continue to meet over the holiday break or over the holidays, uh, whether you're breaking or not. Uh, we have a Monday evening meeting for women at seven o'clock. We have a Saturday evening meeting also at seven o'clock, both in Katie Luther Chapel. Uh, if you are in recovery or you know somebody that is in recovery looking for a meeting, please send them this way. Uh, these are our long-standing meetings here, uh, well attended. And, um, and very supportive groups. So we want to do our part to support them as well. Uh, they are continuing to meet, as I said, during this holiday season. So important if you are in recovery to continue going to meetings and being part of that. One more week of our Bible study, which is virtual. We are, are partnering with Living Faith Lutheran and Pembroke Pines and their pastor, Pastor Jonathan Gant, who is not only uh, the pastor of Living Faith, but is the dean of the conference and our administrative pastor in this in interim time. Uh, he and I are doing a Bible study together, one more week of it. The Bible study meets on Zoom at 6.30. Uh, we have, uh, this week is entitled Witness. So it's about finally arriving where we are, that was this past week, on our pilgrimage to Palestine, and now witnessing to what we are seeing and hearing. So you can still join in. You haven't missed anything. Uh, you can, can jump right in. And then, of course, prayer at the end of the day at 8 o'clock. And thanks to those of you who persevered last week. Uh, I honestly do not know what Facebook was up to when they kicked me off and said, you're doing too many videos too fast. Uh, the only videos that we do are Sundays and Wednesdays. So if that's too fast for Facebook, uh, that's really sad. But uh, we'll let that be what it is. And uh, as always, if there are any technical difficulties, we'll make it work. I went ahead and recorded last week after the technical glitch. So if you missed it or it got cut off for you as it did for everybody, you can go back and watch it. There's a link to it on our Facebook page. It's on our YouTube channel and our website. Our reverse advent calendar continues. If you're here in person in our gathering space, you saw four large blue boxes. Uh, and on our gathering table, a list of items that we are gathering for the Ministry of Hope South Florida, 
We're going to use all that we gather between our preschool and our church community uh, to make bags for homeless individuals to be distributed at a shared meal early in 2022. So if you'd like to contribute to that, the list is available uh, on the gathering table in the narthex. Uh, it's also available online on our website, or you can give and we will do the shopping for you um, by using our online giving platform, Realm. Should also mention that everything you need to know for the holidays is on our website, zion-lutheran.org. Uh, if you don't have that, if you're here every week and you hear me say zion-lutheran.org, that should be pretty much embedded in your brain by now. What you need to know is what follows. So for the holidays, naturally, hyph or, uh, slash holidays. So everything you need to know is on a holidays page. That includes our Christmas Eve service, which is this Friday at seven o'clock. Everyone is invited. We worship as families. Uh, please uh, plan your dinner beforehand or afterwards, uh, depending on your, your family traditions. Come together with us, worship. Uh, everybody's invited, kids of all ages, uh, families, ages you know two to 102 uh, we'd love to see you here it is a service of lessons and carols it concludes with candlelight so we'll have our candelabra up uh, and decorated in only a way that zion can and one announcement that did not make it into a slide is we need some volunteers on tuesday this tuesday a couple days from now at one o'clock if you are available that afternoon to come and help us clean the church in preparation for Christmas Eve. We have a very short uh, to-do list, let's call it a Honey Jesus to-do list, um, of things that, that we would like to have done prior to Christmas Eve so that this sanctuary is looking uh, and feeling the best it can be for all those who may be visiting with us on Christmas Eve. So Tuesday at one o'clock, if you are available, dress casually, uh, we will be cleaning, so uh, we'll have the air conditioning on and all that, but you never know. So please don't come in your Sunday best on Tuesday, um, and no promises there. Just two days after Christmas, on Sunday, December 26th, uh, we are celebrating what we are calling Casual Christmas. You've heard me talk about it in, in the last couple of weeks. Um, we do not have a, a pastor on call that weekend for us to serve, and that is by choice. Uh, we'd like to give uh, Pastor Dave and, and everybody else a week off. We'd like to give uh, the people that prepare our worship, which includes uh, Robin Larson, which includes my mother, Gail Schmidt. We'd like to give them a week off from the things that they do, such as preparing communion, setting up the live stream, operating the PowerPoint. So when we say casual Christmas, it is going to be the lowest key Sunday Christmas service you probably have ever seen but it will be the highest praise. We're gonna to come together, we're gonna to sing some Christmas carols together. We ask you to come in your most festive but appropriate Christmas pajamas. Uh, if you have a family set where everybody dresses alike, uh, we do this year, so if that's not enough of a teaser, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, bring your coffee, bring your hot chocolate, and, and come and celebrate with us. It will be very casual, but as I said, full of praise and full of honor to uh, our Lord Jesus, who comes to us in just a few days as a baby. We invite you to stay connected in any and all ways possible. Uh, if you're not checking our website regularly, what are you really doing? No, I'm just kidding. Um, if you're not uh, following us on social media, we invite you to do that. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we have a YouTube channel, we're even on Twitter. Um, it, it's a we're just all over the place, what can we say? Um, and again, everything is available on our website, including archives of our worship services. Um, and a special thanks to all of you who give of your time and talent and treasure to make things like that possible, that we're reaching so many people uh, all over the country and sometimes all over the world, uh, that our ministries for a small congregation really do extend far beyond our reach. Um, that, that can only be attributed to God, and that really is a wonderful thing. Those are our announcements for this morning. We continue with the reading of the Word.
Our first reading is Micah 5, 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are the one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one is, who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from the ancient days. Therefore you shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, and then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the end of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Our song is Luke 1, 46, B through 55. And I'm going to read the unhighlighted part, and y'all are going to just follow the highlighted part. Uh, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. In my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you will be prepared to pray for your holy servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the crowd in their deceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the Lord. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to take care of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Our second reading is Hebrews. 10, 5 through 10. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. And burning offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to you, do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second, and it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Luke. Lord, 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 Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child of my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who has believed, who believed that, that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace, peace, and joy be unto you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. As we prepare for Christmas, what are some of the things that you do as you prepare for Christmas? 
Raise your hand. Tell, tell me. Or just yell it out. Yeah. Decorate. Decorate. Okay, sure. What else? Get presents. Give presents. Get them to give, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Celebrate Jesus' birthday. What what else? What what's a big part of of what's going on right now? Okay. Yeah, prepare for a meal, cook, bake, all those kinds of things, huh? How many of you have been listening to any Christmas music? Okay, yeah. Have any of you found yourself singing those songs when you got out of the car or when you're uh, in the house somewhere? Sure, absolutely. Singing is a big part of Christmas, isn't it, huh? Well, today, I want to talk, and let's go to the first slide there, Gail, if you will. The original songs of Christmas. See, there's somebody right back here who wants to sing right now. <laughs> or I'm talking and so forth. That's great. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting that so many stations, radio stations, and you'll definitely hear it like on Christmas Eve day, won't you, huh? And, and, the, and the next day and so forth. That music fills the air. You can't go in a store without hearing Christmas music. One can you? You can't go anywhere like that. Well, today I want to talk about the original songs of Christmas. And there are four of them that are in the Bible, believe it or not. Now, they may not be the songs that you think are the originals, but, but they are biblically uh, uh, right there in the scriptures. And I, and I want to share that with you. And in fact, you are going to help in this sermon because we're going to sing a little bit of those four songs, okay? In more of a modern tone today. So, today we're going to look briefly at Luke 1 and Luke 2, because these four songs are found right there. And I want to, I want to share about them. The first one is what is made reference to, and what was our song for today, was a big part of that of the first song. It's actually called Mary's song. Okay? It traditionally has been called, what's what's the name of it traditionally? Everybody can y'all tell me? Somebody said it. Where? The Magnificat. Okay, Pastor Anne Marie there. Okay. Good. The Magnificat, yeah. And it's found in Luke 1. And uh, if, if you have your handout for today, it's it's basically printed out as the psalm, or also the second half of this gospel lesson. It begins by saying, Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, His whole, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped His servant Israel in remembrance of His mercy, according to the promise He made, for our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. It's interesting that as we look at that, why don't we go to the next slide there, please, Gail. Yes, it starts with, my soul magnifies or makes greater my Lord. Okay, that's why it's called the Magnificat. It came from uh, the uh, Latin Vulcan, one of the first translations of the Bible and so forth, the Magnificat. And, and there, Mary proclaims right after finding out that she's got this child and so forth, that that uh, God is doing something very powerfully in her life, and that He also has intentions not just for her life but for the whole world. The song goes on to say, "He scatters the proud in the plans of their hearts." You know, pride. And being a follower of Jesus can't coexist in our lives. We have to set aside our pride. And so he's saying, you know, for me and for you, it's a, it's a revolution of sorts in our own lives. The song goes on and says, 
He casts down the mighty. He exalts the humble. And, and so it's also a social plan as well, too. There's, there is something that is hap a dynamic that's happening between us in our world. And that's a social revolution. And thirdly, he said, he has filled those who are hungry, sends the rich empty away. It, it affects every dimension of life, even the economics in our life. And he's saying that this is incredibly important. And so these things are going on. Well, this morning, I said you were going to help help this sermon. We're going to sing a hymn right now that Kurt's going to lead us in. And it's entitled, you see, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness. It's based upon the Magnificat, the words of Mary. Let's sing it together. Kurt, will you lead us? Sure. Zechariah's song. Did you hear that name earlier when I was reading the gospel, Zechariah? Zechariah was a priest in the temple in Jerusalem. And Zechariah's wife was Elizabeth. Mary and Elizabeth were a family with one another. And one of the things that had happened was that Zechariah, being a priest, he and Mary hadn't had a child yet. He didn't think that they were going to have a child, obviously, because he and Elizabeth were getting up in age. And that certainly precluded uh, Zechariah from rising in the ranks of the priesthood, not to have a child, because that's, he had been the son of a, of a priest, you see? And so one day, Zechariah, and this is all recorded in Luke 1, Okay. Zechariah, his team of priests, they would serve twice a year at the, at the temple. And they would, they would uh, uh, the, the sacrifices would be done at the temple. And after the sacrifice was made, the, the team of priests would choose one among them to go into the, the, uh, the court of the Israelites and to uh, burn incense to cover up the smell of the sacrifice. And what happened is that Zechariah got chosen that day to do that. This was the height of his priesthood. This was the greatest honor he could have. And so he goes in and he, he lights the incense, he's burning the incense in the priest of the Israelites there. And, and, and or the, the, excuse me, the uh, court of the priest. And he, he does that. While he's in there doing that, he senses the closeness of God. And God says to him, Zechariah, you, have, you and your wife Elizabeth have been praying for a child. You're going to have a son. And Zechariah was so overwhelmed by it that he just broke down and he didn't come out for the longest time out of the court there. Because he was then to come out, having been in the court of the priest, to come out to the court of the Israelites and to proclaim to them a blessing, benediction. Finally, he comes out to do just that. 
But he's so overwhelmed by the awesomeness of God and by this new promise in his life, he can't even speak. And someone else has to give the blessing for him. From that day until the day of his son's birth, Zechariah cannot speak, cannot say a word. So then, finally, his son is born. Everybody expected them to name the son Zechariah after his father, which was a tradition. And Mary and Elizabeth, excuse me, said, no, that's, that's not the way it's going to be. Everybody talks, everybody looks to Zechariah, like, what is the final word on this? And he, he motions to have a, a pad brought to him, something to write on. And he writes out, the child's name will be, you know what it was? John. And then Zechariah can speak. His mouth is opened up again. And he proclaims God's, God's goodness in his song. In his song. And, and that's recorded in the second half of uh, Luke's uh, first chapter. It says, His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and has redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And as he said this, through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us. And he says, he goes on to say, part of the song is, and you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. And you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of your God, of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness, in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. That's Zechariah's song. Today we're going to sing a song right now, as you see up there, uh, Blessed Be the God of Israel. Kurt, can you lead us on that? certainly for Christmas, Christmas Eve. And the angels appear in, in Luke 2, verses 8 through 15. Who do they sing to? Who do, who do the angels sing to? The shepherds, exactly. Exactly. Now, why was it important that they sang to the shepherds? Do you know that shepherds in that day, and even today, there are shepherds around the world. Do you know that shepherds are the lowest of all in the social ladder? Why? They're out spending their day with sheep all day. You think they smell very well, very good? Probably not. 
they, 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 and they were certainly reviled by the very Orthodox Jews because the Orthodox Jews were really into following all the laws. You've got to wash so many times, and you've got to be ready for the Sabbath, and so forth and so on, with all these various rules and laws and so forth. And, and the shepherds weren't able to, to follow those because they were out camping with their uh, sheep. It's interesting, as I was preparing for this, I came across an interesting thought that I had never thought of before. Do you know how far it is from Jerusalem and the temple to Bethlehem? Six miles. It's about the distance from here to maybe Delray, huh? Not very far. One thought was that the shepherds who were approached by those angels on that holy night were the shepherds who were preparing the lambs for sacrifice at the temple, the unblemished lambs. And wouldn't it be interesting if that were the case? Because what is Jesus called? He's called the Lamb of God, is he not? So today we're going to, uh, to sing a hymn that's definitely based upon this scene. And can you tell me what that, give me that hymn is, you think? Angels we have heard on high, huh? Let's, let's sing that. We're going to sing three verses today. as you see up on the screen, Simeon's song. Now who is Simeon? Who is Simeon? Let me, let me share from Luke's Gospel, the, the second chapter, the 21st verse of Mark. On the eighth day, when it was the time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. And when the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem present him to the Lord as it had been written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, 
Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light and revelation of the Gentiles, and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, The child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul, too. And so Simeon, an old man, is there waiting. That reminds me, you know what? We're never too young or too old for God to speak to us and to speak through us to another person. And so no matter what age you are, it makes no difference. God can still use you and me. It goes on to speak about a woman by the name of Anna as well, too. And Anna was, was a, a widow who had gone to the temple and praised God regularly. And she, too, came and asked for God's blessing upon that child, Jesus. That, that uh, song is what today in liturgy we call the nook de minutes. Perhaps you've seen that word or heard that word before. It means, Lord, send your servant in peace. Send your servant in peace. And isn't that what all of us pray for in our life is peace, isn't it? And Simeon and Anna both had a sense of that. We're going to sing one more song. It's entitled, O Lord, now let your servant. This is probably the only one before that we are not at all familiar with. So if you are a musical type, Take the hymnal in front of you and turn to him 313, 313, the same old verses of O Lord, now let me serve. <laughs> song in your heart. What inspired that song in each of those people? It was none other than the Holy Spirit. Whether it was Elizabeth and Zechariah, whether it was Mary, whether it was the uh, shepherds having heard the uh, angels sing, or whether it was uh, Simeon and Anna, who was always the Holy Spirit. And it reminds us that we cannot live the faith that we want to live without the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I pray that, that your Christmas this year will be enriched by knowing the original Christmas songs and to know that people like you and like me were inspired and used by God for his purposes in the Christmas story. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We continue the scene of our we're going to do the Holy Baptist We've done our singing. We've done
and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I'm going to come over. <laughs> Okay, we will real ropes. Real ropes. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughter, your daughters, and your sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Lord, sustain Brial Rose with the gift of your Holy Spirit, that spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Brazil, Brazil, I apologize. Brazil Rose, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. She's such a lovely little girl. <laughs> okay, Joseph. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Michael. Hi. Hi there. Hi, Joseph. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Joseph. I want a big smile, okay? <laughs> Joseph Michael, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good boy, good boy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Dear Lord, sustain <laughs> Sustain Joseph Michael with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Joseph Michael, child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. He was very good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit more. light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And now for Michael Joseph. I'm on the wrong side. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. 
And now, for this congregation, let us welcome the newly baptized Rial and Michael. We, we welcome, welcome you into the body, into the body of, Christ of Christ and into the, the mission we share. Join Lord us in giving thanks and praise to God, God and bear God's creative and redeeming work to all the world. Amen. Let's welcome the newly baptized with a round of applause. So before we continue with our prayers of intercession, we have just a, a, a few gifts from the congregation. Uh, you can extinguish the baptismal candles. And we invite you on this date each year to remember Brielle and Joseph's baptismal anniversaries. Here are the boxes for those. Thank you. Trust that they get to where they need to be. This is a, a symbol of baptism, a baptismal shell that you can place in their bedrooms as a reminder and then we make sure they go to the right place. It's books for families to talk about how baptism is not just a one-day occurrence, but a lifelong remembrance and a lifelong practice. So we hope that you'll stay connected, not only as a family in Christ, but connected here at Zion as well. I know half of the family is, is a little far away in Daytona, but we're virtual, we're here, and uh, we certainly thank Everybody who's here participating, family and friends, you are most welcome here, and congratulations on the back of Zion Church. Let us stand and continue with the prayers of intercession. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. Use the church's gifts of ministry for your service, bringing your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that brings forth abundant life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to the imbalances of power. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort any struggling with infertility and those who await test results, who are in treatment and hospice care, and others in need, especially Susie, Lydia, Matthew, Madeline, Catherine, Allison, Chrissy, Lorraine, Steve, Jack, Joe, Debbie, Todd, Katie, Pastor Fred, Pat, Pete, Carol, Billy, Pat, Beth Ann, Adriana, Lisa, Chris, Jennifer, Alyssa, Laura, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Bless you. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and community, especially Deerfield Beach Community Cares, the Fruitful Field, and Hope South Florida. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Lord, in your mercy. 
God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace. Mercifully, to 
accept our praise and thanksgiving. And with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servant. And these your own gifts of bread and wine. So that we and all who share in the body and the blood of Christ may be filled with a heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin. To be formed live in your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are invited to be seated. Everyone is welcome at the Lord's table. We begin communion with the south side of the sanctuary, which is to my left. We ask you to go around back in front of the organ and the piano and come around this way to follow the traffic pattern I am demonstrating for you now. Uh, once the south side is communed, the center and the north side, you are welcome to the Lord's table. Come, for all is now ready. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord appoint you his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 